What's up, guys? It's a brand new podcast of Restaurant Radio. I'm Michael. And I'm Anthony. We're going to be talking about fanboys and how terrible they are at making the world a worse place than it actually already is. Okay. Um. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about fanboys. Um. What's it? Oh, my God. He, the madman. I couldn't help it. I couldn't. You, it could, a, you really could have. But why? <sighs> we're going to hold We're talking about fanboyism. In so, video games, like this is the perfect opportunity to read about everything. <laughs> That's not untrue. Okay, and we might make you re. And if part. you do, just leave a, a nice long re in the comments. <laughs> so, with uh, three really huge releases coming out this month, being Dissidia, uh Monster Hunter World, and Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, fanboys have been very vocal as of late. Very, very very vocal. Yeah. Oh, boy. I wish you guys (laughs) could see the things that we have seen. How do you want to even jump into this topic? Like, where where do you want to start? Is there a right way to? No. I don't think there is. (laughs) Okay. Let's just dive in there. Whichever topic, whichever fandom suits you first, just go for it. Okay, so the one that I know about the most will probably be the DBZ fandom, because the um, the abundance of people not want to play this who are loyalists to the you know the actual you know way DBZ is supposed to be is momentous actually because i have never seen people who are supposedly a fan of something be that like enraged about a game being a little different than what they're used to michael then you have not been seeing the fandom for that long (laughs) i may not have been (laughs) these people have gotten spoiled by things like the budokai series and all that stuff that now they're coming into a game where yamcha can beat anybody and they're just like Y'all just somehow beating Beerus. <laughs> you just called him so re. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's what we're calling the show. Fanboys re. <laughs> uh, okay. So have you seen some of the um the um what was it? The Steam posts? <laughs> in comments oh day. yes and people talk about respect the fa- respect, respect the, can- the canon i, I get another t-shirt I'll- um people even people who don't give who don't really care about the fandom they're like oh all you gotta do is you know block you spam block and you <laughs> spam, block. S- spam block how do you spam block easy you just keep pressing back <laughs> over and over again <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing, honestly. Like, I didn't know spam and block was like block a whole... spam. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow, one of the more common things amongst those fanboys, Xenoverse Two was better. Oh God, that's just that's let's just... get this out the way right now, please. Xenoverse Two was absolute garbage. That was straight <laughs> garbage. Juice. Literal, literal garbage. It was straight garbage <laughs> juice. It was just. It was no. <laughs> Garbage. That game out of here. He said garbage is dumpster juice. <laughs> I am totally on board for saying that about that game. I was never I don't know. Like I feel like DBZ Fire has refined the battle system for a change, actually. Like, yeah, because it gave, it, it gave you a good one that didn't have like all these specific button presses that were hidden to you <laughs> and all this stuff. <laughs> oh, it has perfect timing. This game requires skill. No, um, it really doesn't. As a person who was given uh, more time than he should have to this game because um, I admit while I didn't buy it I didn't play it quite a bit because a co-worker of mine also believed in Xenoverse 2 that's not a good co-worker that was an experience I bet there was and he was like well I mean they have Goku Black in it now I know you like Goku Black oh, God, he's trying to like and he rang me in with that I bet. And it was terrible, still. <laughs> so, this division within the fandom, um, how do you feel that this helps? Do you feel like this, this, this um, hinders the game's success? With this game, I don't think it even did anything. <laughs> this is a case where people are going to buy this game regardless. That's true. Just This because- is a Dragon Ball Z game. This was getting bought. That is true because back, not just because it was Dragon Ball Z, but it's the fact that it was made by a company like Arc Systems Works. Oh yeah, like, so this is gonna bring in fans of Arc Systems Works, 
and of Dragon Ball Z. And a lot of people who are like R6 Wars games like Dragon Ball Z too. Like that's such a like that's such a perfect pairing, honestly. How this hasn't happened sooner is amazing. Yeah, I just think that R6 Wars didn't have the clout back in the day to be able to pull something like this off. I mean, before Guilty Gear, I don't think he had was like Blaze Blue. Like the research, I think the researchers of their popularity helped them get the them to get um Ben and Namco to help but let them make this game. I can see that. I guess they had to show and prove they can make their own fighting games first. I'm like, you know what? They can do this better than we could. So, that's how and it could they? So you did mention the um Monster Hunter uh, fandom. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. Please so- enlighten me. A lot of the Monster Hunter fan- fandom is upset because there is a Monster Hunter game on the Switch in Japan. Oh, okay. It did not get localized. It is probably not going to be localized until further notice. And a lot of people were upset that it was moving into the console space after being in the handheld space for so long. Oh. The division came in from people like, well, you're just going to abandon the fan base. You must not want money. I'll never buy this game. <laughs> there are people boycotting this game because it's wow. not on their handhelds. Oh, well, that's too bad for that because um, this game already sold like $2 million in three days. So, Yeah. Yeah. I think it sold more than that. But I could be wrong. But I know it sold out. It was a really big amount. And of course, there are people, as with any fandom that is used to a certain standard or certain way of doing things, there are people out there who will kind of down it, saying, oh, well, the Scout Flies made this game too easy. Um, This game is too casualized. (laughs) When all they're really trying to do is streamline the experience. And yes, bring in new players because... To new players, Monster Hunter is a very daunting game. Yes. There's a lot going on. And, hey, if it becomes easier to play, more power to them. Yeah, but, I mean, you still have that some type of skill to be able to play them anyway. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I think that's just like, I think they're just like the area, I mean, the um the barrier of entry has been lowered, so remember people can play it. That's not a bad thing. Not at all. And... So many will tell you that that's a terrible thing. I saw the memes coming up, like saying, "Oh, everybody's used to tutorials. Well, you won't get a tutorial in this game, herder." Like, damn. Except you will. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what any game should have these days, because you don't get like a manual for games anymore. So the tutorial is the manual. Yeah, you get intro level missions where you are taught the game. It's just that that tutorial isn't handholdy. The tutorial is very much interactive and, you know, take what you learn and then do it, which is fair. That's a good tutorial system. That is. And as I, you can see, these fanboys have not hurt the game sales one bit. I don't know. This is just such a weird time with like these three big games coming out and like just the fact that how these people are like taking it and like. Almost making it like they want to shape the game in a way they think it should be. I mean, I'm not a fan of Dissidia NT at all, but I'm not going to sit there and make it so that I'm going to spread, like, I don't know, like, just down the game every chance I get. Like, I'm not going to spend that much energy. There's just too much games out there that I can, like, put the energy towards and just down in this one game that I may have wanted. Like, you would think that you would want your preferred, um, your preferred franchise to do well to be successful however these people want certain titles to fail yeah like the people who want street fighter 5 to fail there was a group that wanted monster hunter worlds to fail so that they would be forced to come to the handheld space that's not that's not how they even that works yeah they don't understand that if it fails there probably won't be another monster hunter yeah that's this is good for the franchise because that can go back and do another uh, handheld what they decide to. Exactly. Like, what I they don't... don't get is if this game succeeds, they might have enough to localize the game you want. Exactly. And yeah, you'll be a bit behind, admittedly, but that's okay. You won't be behind. From, I mean, you won't be alone. Yeah. There'll be a lot of other people who are behind too, yeah. so you can start from scratch with them. I know it's just a weird, like, mentality, just a weird philosophy when it comes to games these days. And just like. Fanboyism the, comes from a place of, like, I want to say superiority. And entitlement. Exactly. Like, a deep. These, 
Ugh. You'll have people who say that they are the most well versed in this thing, and they know better than you. They know better than the developer. They know they know better. And if they don't get what they want because they are spending their money, then they will riot. They will stomp their feet. They will cry. They will re. <laughs> they they'll do whatever they have to until developers either cave. Or just stop making games for their franchise or whatever happens. But thankfully, fanboys do not have the power that they once used to have. Because the grand majority love this game. Yeah. If I turn on my PS4 right now, there would be no less than maybe 10 people on Monster Hunter right now. Which is pretty huge because my list is not that huge. Mm-hmm. That to see 10 to 20 people on the same game is pretty amazing. At the same time, too. Yes. That's quite a that's quite a feat. That shouldn't be taken lightly. No. No, it shouldn't. Do you think Hell, that... As, as a person who wasn't even a fan of Monster Hunter before this, I'm playing this game. Yeah, that's and actually... I, and I really like it. Do you think that fanboys and fanboyism in general is kind of like... I want to say they feel as though they need to be um, catered to first before anybody else. Yes. Okay. I will tell you that right now. Yes. Yeah. They believe that what they want should be paramount because they believe that people like them is the lifeblood of that series. They believe that their opinions should matter the most because without them, the franchise will cease to exist. And that is some of the most... Con- it's it's so I can't even find the proper word to tell you about how stupid that is. Is delusional. They're, okay, that that works really. That bad. is the most delusional <laughs> way of thinking. But they know best. They've been here for the longest. That what they feel about the game should be, you know, universally liked and appreciated. A fandom that I will say I have been here the longest for is the Pokemon fandom. Ooh. That is a cesspool, by the way. Uh, I've saw, I've seen. But Pokemon, you know, the game about the pocket monsters, it all started off where we all just used Earthquake because that was the best <laughs> move in the game. <laughs> Has just tur- As the game became more complex, the fandom became just a, just a shit pile. Yeah, definitely. Ugh. Now Oof. you you want to trade Pokemon? Oh well, they have to have this. It has to be shiny. It has to have the right EVs and IVs and move sets and egg moves and this and that and <laughs> and all this stuff. But these people don't place nowhere. Are you placing value on pro play over casual play? Yes. <laughs> Because underneath all of that garbage, there is a game that's about 30 hours long that people can enjoy because they love Pokemon. Competitive play in Pokemon is one of the most idiotic things to me. Because one, these people don't place. And two, <laughs> they're, move, they're on a, like a set of rules that don't even make sense. Okay? <laughs> they, the, I will give the Pokemon community this. They are a hell of a large community. Oh, yeah. They went so far as to create two, I want to say, conjointed um, community spaces in Serebii and Smogan. Smogan being, uh, you know, where you get all the competitive rules for Pokemon Showdown and the way that people play competitively for singles. Mm-hmm. Of course, Nintendo has their way, but it's for doubles. And to make that is no small feat. However... It is so cancerous. <laughs> I will never forget, as I was trying to get into, I guess, the Smogan competition way of playing, where I came with a move set for one of my favorite Pokemon, Garchomp. Mm-hmm. And the guy sent me a Facebook message upset about the way I ran my Garchomp. Like, why would you do that? That's so stupid. Oh my god, you're such a noob. I guess I'll help you so you won't be so terrible. Dang. And he sent me a link to all these movesets that are optimal. And I want to throw out there that he lost to me. but you know. <laughs> Well, you weren't playing smoking rules, or um, right? I, I wasn't playing correctly. Ah, uh, see? You know, that's neither here nor there. The point is, fanbo- fanboys can 
really ruin an experience for you if you're not prepared for that. That leads me to the last uh, fandom that, uh, one of the three that I brought up that I hope Michael can assist me in because, you know, he's more into that than I am. The what? Final Fantasy fandom. Oh, yes. I gotta hear that. <laughs> so. I'm super ready. Dissidia. It's pretty well known that I do not like that game. Neither one of us like that game. I, I'm not here for it. And I even put out a, a a written piece about how much I don't like it. And I haven't gotten a whole lot about it. But the stuff I have gotten has been, hmm, let's say, strongly worded. <laughs> I didn't know people were going to cape so hard for this game. And what really astounds me is that those who cape for it have never played the original Dissidia games like I have. Really? The people who came to me to talk to me about this game, how much I don't like it, this is their first Dissidia game. Well, that makes sense. Yes. They have no context to the previous game to understand. All they which... know is the Final Fantasy games that these characters are from. And that now they're getting a dream game. That's not... That... No. <laughs> I was actually told... Because there are some characters I even talk specifically about. I talked about how much I I wanted Cecil to be good. How much I wanted um, Cloud to not be such a fucking bust, busted character. <laughs> and they were like, well, did you ever play Final Fantasy VII? Cloud was the main character. Of course he's great. Oh, stop that. Oh, did you even play Final Fantasy IV? Oh my goodness, it's like you've never even played a Final Fantasy game. Or or Final Fantasy IV is a garbage game anyway. Wow. Right? <laughs> it's not one of my favorites, but it's not garbage. Now, another tidbit, Final Fantasy IV is my personal favorite game. It's a really good game. Like, especially I mean, the remakes. The remakes are really good. The, um, the remake that came on 3DS is, that, is my personal favorite yeah, version. Yeah, it's a really good one. And... <laughs> I tried not to, you know, go too far into that territory, but it was weird that instead of focusing on the game and my points, he wanted to focus on my credentials that were supposed to somehow discredit what I thought and what I felt about the game. I want to put something out there. Credentials do not always invalidate the way you feel about how fun a game is. Yeah. If the game isn't fun to you, you don't have to justify that feeling with credentials. You don't have to be a PhD in Final Fantasy lore to know that a <laughs> game doesn't feel good to you. I.e. my time with Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> if that was your first Final Fantasy and you didn't like it, you don't have to justify that by saying, well, I mean, this is my first one. Or, oh, well, you know, I just... You know, you, no, you didn't like it, you didn't like it. You don't have to tell these fanboys that you've never played one or that you've played every single one up to that one. You have to preface that most of the time. It's like, <laughs> have you even played a Final Fantasy before? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> fanboys are a curse. They are. Because... I will say the fanboys have made it so that I've either backed away from some fandoms or not even gotten into some because Tales is a series I'm very spotty in. I believe my first Tales that I took, you know, seriously because my first one technically was Tales of Eternia, but the one I finished was Tales of Zillia. Ah, such a good game. But then I went back to Tales of Grace to finish that story. That's another story for another day. Um... But I fear going into the Tales fandom and saying, hey, guys, wasn't Tales of Zillia great because of Michael's horror stories in the Tales <laughs> fandom? <laughs> and I have other things to do, like <laughs> loving myself. Okay, so the Tales fandom, right? There's three games that are hallmarks of the this, this series. That is Abyss, Vesperia, and Symphonia. Those are the three ones that are the main ones that get the most, like, contention. And then you have the other games with anomalies like, you know, Zillia be another anomaly. Then you have the Zestiria Apologist, 
who fervently go out their way and tell people this is a really good game. And then you got the Basaria ones that just like, this is the best in the series. And you have the people, of course, from the other games who don't, don't agree with that. And then you got the, you know, the, the retro people, because that's from every fan of the retro. Oh, of course. Who like, I only play the ones on the Super Nintendo because that's the best ones. And it's a cluster of foolishness, to be honest. But it's not as toxic as the Final Fantasy community. Because the worst thing I'm seeing in the Tales community would have to be their love of lollies, their lollycon. That's probably the worst. Oh, that's and, gross. And the um the incest um shipping may be pretty bad too. What? Okay, so in Z- Tales Zillia two, there's um the main character and his brother are like kind of really pushed in that game storyline. Many people have shipped them and made you know artwork for them. So yeah, I've seen a lot of ships. Hey, you know I shouldn't be surprised. There's a <laughs> bunch of ships of you know incestual. Um, origin in many fandoms. Because for, for them, some reason, the Dragon Ball people think that Goku and Gohan is a good ship. Wow, that's that's terrible. That, right? <laughs> that's so bad. <laughs> I think that a lot of times with certain like fandoms, they kind of like bleed over from other ones. Like I know the anime community is very much into a lot of that other stuff. So a lot of the bad stuff is in the anime community kind of spill over to the Tales community and other ones that are similar. So that whole incest and lollycon and stuff, it's going to bleed over. So if you like lollies in anime, you can really like, like, like lollies in Tales games and other games too to have lollies. So, and it's an incest shipping too. And just a whole bunch of stuff. That's all types of terribleness. Yeah. So, but the Tales Phantom is more tame than the other ones. It just leaves like a, a decent line of like general respect for the series more so. Here's a question for you when you when you get a second to think about it. Mm-hmm. Worst fandom you've ever been a part of? Mm, I would say the Final Fantasy fandom has been the worst. It's not so much what they do, it's what they stand for. They're very much so against progression as far as, you know like racial um depictions of people they're oh. very much against lgbt stuff they're very much against they're very toxic masculine people too which is weird because final fantasy has a lot of androgynous characters so you would think they would be more open to it but they're not i remember when um what was it that um oh what's the name of that game that mobile game that came out the 3d one that came out recently I know what you're talking about and i remember when his original outfit came out he looked kind of like he was dressed really skimpy and they were like oh my god why don't they have a man dressed like that how you have a man dressed like a woman like they had stuff like that going on yikes and somebody asked like what would be what would be so bad about having a gay male character as the main character like oh why would you do that <laughs> final fantasy never had a gay male character they never had a gay main character why would you do that that's stupid and then you get the whole homophobia and all that stuff. It just goes from there. So, yes, Final Fantasy would probably be the worst. Okay, I can see that. Yikes. That yeah. It was that bad. It was very bad. Ooh. Oh, like, God. They're so backwards and just so conservative. I just don't understand. You can be conservative playing a game and anything Final Fantasy related. I will say Pokemon is the worst one I've been in. Jesus Christ. You would think things about cute animals would be good. Oh, God. <laughs> cute, um, cute animal creatures. It's, it's racist, of course. You know, I've, I've gotten some stupid stuff. Um, Some people will say, if you have a black character, I won't even play you. Wow. Yeah, if your avatar is black, I won't even play you. Wow. Now, to stay police themselves to some degree, but, you know... They will. The only things that they will check are things that are obscenely racist or anti-Semitic. Mm, okay, but sexism? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Oh man, and, oh and they and they steal a lot too. Now, how can you steal from another person's game? I'm sure you're asking. Yes, please enlighten me. So. What will happen is that they'll find glitches and ways to like take a Pokemon thing and trade, especially oh. when Pokebank became a thing oh. and you can mass trade. E, that's not people good. people were getting stolen from left and right because they were naive. There were people who were like, "All right, I just made a bunch of shinies. If you want one, just trade me a shiny of equal value." And next thing you know, you're stuck with a Rattata. <laughs> 
But Riot's is top tier. Shit, stop. Okay. <laughs> but I think the worst of it was the sexism and the way people will like make their ships, and if you didn't accept it, then they would they would get really defensive. Yeah, defending toxic behavior and toxic types of like things is really not good. That was a tales thing. That was something that tells me I found a lot of people defending like you know little girls being with like 60 year old men and stuff like i didn't really see that to be a good thing yeah it got really bad once it got to like sun and moon and the story and the characters got like really robust i guess oh well, they were the the main antagonist lucimine they were shipping her with her kids <laughs> why would you do that mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. <laughs> okay but yeah that one got pretty bad. So, to say all this, fandoms can be fun to find other people who enjoy the same things you like. Yeah, there are some fandoms that aren't that bad. For all the crap that the FGC may get, when you go into the fandoms of specific games, it's not really as bad as you might think. It can be good. I mean, you will find the trash. They find a, they find a way to come out and be seen and be known and be heard. Oh, yeah. But... It's getting better in some of these places. Yeah, I think because people are cracking down on just, like, really bad behavior, more so than they used to. Which and is it, really good. Yeah. But. So don't be scared to get into a fandom, but recognize if that fandom is toxic. Yeah, I love Final Fantasy, but the to- Final Fantasy fandom is really toxic. Now, one fandom I did get into that I'm really happy I'm a part of is the Falcom fandom. Oh. It's probably because it's such a small community, but everybody just loves the hell out of their games. They're not sitting there all day comparing games to other ones, which ones they're bad. They're just talking about the fact they love these games a lot. And that's a fan I love to be a part of. Like, I'm not sitting here, like, I don't even have the, like, the want or desire to sit here and try to say, oh, this is the best game in the series. I'm just like, oh my God, I like this game. And people are like, yeah, I do too. And we're just like, happy go lucky. But if you go to stuff like Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7 is the best. What are you talking about? It's tactics. And it just goes on to this, like, really, like, stupid, like, pissing match for some reason. The Persona fan is pretty good. I heard that the uh, Shin Megami Tensei fandom is trash, though. Ah, uh, well, we don't mess with them. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know them. <laughs> They'll pull your car in a minute. No, like, they really will. <laughs> oh, you like Shin Megami Tensei? Oh, well, what's Jack Frost stats? <laughs> oh. He's not lying at all. And they will definitely put a car in. demons. <laughs> That's meanwhile, not <laughs> meanwhile, the most problematic thing you'll face in the Persona fandom is Blank is the best waifu. Now oh, you yeah. started a war. You did, but that's it, that's 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 harmless. Yeah, that's it, right. It's harmless. But it man, get really Shimmer got me testing community. They can keep that. Oh, you're going to be a. I don't want to get nowhere nope. near that. Nowhere near that. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> What's Jack Frost stats? Who's going to remember that? Oh, you plebe. I bet you think Teddy's a mascot. It's Jack Frost, you plebeian. <laughs> and especially if you only play Persona, don't even go anywhere near Shimmer Gabby Tensei community. But my favorite fandom is the Disgaea fandom. That's probably another but shitpost, honestly. It's part shitpost and part ways to make your level grinding easier. Oh, that's and good. And more progressive. See, that's what I like. I like when fandoms help you, actually. like. Oh, yeah. I've gotten all sorts of tips from them. That's actually good. I like stuff like that. I don't like fans where you're like, are you asking for help? Why are you asking for help? I'm like, what? Like, and, chill, bro. And thankfully, the community has pretty much a pretty well, like, reasonably set tier list of the Disgaea games. Like, we all can agree on these games. Yeah, other fans can't do that. Not at all. They still are. They're probably arguing right now about what's the best Final Fantasy <sighs> at this very moment. Man. Ooh. <laughs> what? I thought of a poll. What kind of poll? You'll see on the site. Oh, okay. Well, well, there you go. Any final thoughts about these uh, fandoms? Stay away from the fandoms we just talked about that were toxic. <laughs> just play the games, man. Just play the games. Yes. Get you some friends. Maybe join a Facebook group. But don't get but too be deep. Because these Facebook groups are pretty much the embodiment of the fandoms that they wish they're a part of. So if, if they, don't think it's because on Facebook it's going to be like not toxic. Like... If that fandom's toxic, they'll bring the toxicity they will to find you. Yes, just because they can bring a name to it will not stop them. Yeah, so be careful out there in fanboy land. It's not hard. It's it's kind of hard out here. It really is. 
All right, so what fandoms are you a part of? Are you a part of Final Fantasy fandom? Do you think Seven is the best? And if you do, why do you think that? Um, yeah, um, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com best out of Russian Rail so you can see our polls and see our memes and other stuff and content. Go to our website and read stuff we wrote. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time.